How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship today on this beautiful Lord's Day. It is Transfiguration Sunday, the last Sunday of the Sundays after Epiphany, and that means that Wednesday evening will be Ash Wednesday and the beginning of Lent. Let us begin our worship with the call to worship. Please stand as you are able. 
trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as God himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Today we see our Lord Jesus Christ unveiled in glory. A foretaste of the glory of our own resurrection. God does not want us to perish, but to come to his life-giving light. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. Our eyes are clouded and our understanding veiled. Our lives are full of shameful things. We stand in need of light. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and let your light shine upon us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Jesus Christ, who died for us, and rose again, is God's beloved Son. Listen to him and behold his glory. I declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share God's peace. Peace with you at home. not going to work right. Our service does continue on page 147. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us be silent. Comfort. 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may all be seated. Good morning, sir. So, Wednesday evening is the beginning of Lent. Did you remember what it's called? Ash Wednesday. Now, have you been to Ash Wednesday before? You don't remember? So you, you don't know the main reason we call it Ash Wednesday. You do know why? That's it. We make a cross with ashes and we put that on everybody's forehead. That seems kind of strange to me, doesn't it to you? No, not too strange? <laughs> so we put this cross of ashes on people's foreheads, and we say, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And that is how we begin the Lenten season. Now, that line, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, we get that from Genesis, because when God created Adam and Eve, he reached down and he got some dust, and he formed the man and the woman out of the dust of the ground. So as we begin Lent, we remind ourselves that, that we are. We are created out of the same stuff that the rest of the world is, and that we're not going to live forever. And then, then we make that cross out of ashes. And if, as you read the Bible, every so often you will hear about folks when they are mourning or especially when they're realizing that they're sinful and that they need God's forgiveness, that they cover themselves in ashes and sackcloth. I always figured sackcloth was like the gunny sack from gunny sack races. But as we begin Lent, we remind ourselves that, that, yes, indeed, we are mortal, and that, yes, indeed, 
We need God's forgiveness. But that cross we make on our foreheads, that reminds me of our baptism. Because when we're baptized, we take some of the water and we mark that cross of Christ on the baby's forehead. And some of us, when we come in, we take some of that baptismal water and make a little cross to remind ourselves of our baptism. And we do. We remember on Good Fr- or on Ash Wednesday that we need God's forgiveness and that God has promised to give us that forgiveness. We make the sign of a cross, the place where Jesus indeed did. He, he won and gave us that forgiveness of our sins. And so we begin Lent reminding ourselves that we do, we need God's forgiveness, that we're not going to live forever on our own, but that God has promised to do that, to forgive our sins and give us eternal life. So that's a big part of how we celebrate Ash Wednesday. And this year, I thought, well, let's see if we can't share that gift with the whole community. So, 7 o'clock, Ash Wednesday morning, maybe a little earlier, because I know a couple of us go to work earlier than 7. <laughs> I will be available for anybody who would like to get ashes, either from our group or from the community. And then we will also have our regular Ash Wednesday service for those who would like to do that. And it's one of those things you could do both if you wanted Cool? Amen.
The first reading for today is taken from the book of Exodus, the 34th chapter. Moses' face shone with the reflected glory of God after he received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. The sight caused the Israelites to be afraid, so Moses wore a veil to mask the radiance of God's glory, taking it off when he spoke directly with God. The lesson reads, Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 99. We will read it responsibly as it's printed in your bulletin. The Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great, great in Zion, is high, is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. Almighty, Almighty King, King, lover of justice, justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. <laughs> Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron are among your priests, and Samuel among those who call upon your name, O Lord. They called upon you, and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them their evil deeds. 
Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. The second reading for today is taken from the book of 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. In his debates with the Corinthians, Paul contrasts the glory of Moses with the glory of Christ. The Israelites could not see Moses' face because of the veil. But in Christ, we see the unveiled glory of God and are transformed into Christ's likeness. The lesson reads, Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness. Not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the glory that was being set aside. But in their, their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, when Moses is read, a veil lays over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. I... I'm sure you all are aware that the Bible was not originally written in English. It was written in Hebrew and Greek and a little bit in Aramaic. And translating the Bible is an interesting task. Now, no one speaks the kind of Hebrew that they spoke back in those days, and no one speaks the kind of Greek that they spoke back in those days. 
and no one speaks Aramaic anymore. So we have to actually work at translating. And some things just don't translate well. You might notice once in a while as you are reading that it will say, the meaning of the Hebrew is unclear. Because there's some words in the Hebrew that we just don't know what they mean. And, and then there are other difficulties. For instance, there are some words that we know what they mean, but there's no English word that really matches up. And so they struggle, those who do interpreting, to try to find, or translating, to try to find ways to make those words make sense. We talked in our Genesis Bible study that sometimes there is a word that has more than one meaning. And which of those meanings that you pick has a great deal of to do with how that verse reads. And then there are some words that probably should just not be translated at all. In today's gospel lesson, it says that Moses and Elijah appeared and they were talking with Jesus they were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, that's kind of a strange sentence, isn't it? Sounds like they were talking about Jesus going to Jerusalem and he was getting ready to leave, to go to heaven. But that word is exodus. They were talking about Jesus Exodus, that he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Probably should have just left that word, because indeed, that story of the Exodus, it's all over this story of the transfiguration, from the being on the side of the mountain where God met Moses and called him to go to Egypt and set his people free to the shining glory of God that appeared on Moses' face to indeed Elijah, who was encountered God in the quiet of that mountainside and was called to go and set God's people free on the side of the mountain with that glimpse of heaven all around Moses and Elijah and Jesus discussed Jesus' mission. He was coming down from the mountain. He was coming down from the mountain to do an exodus. He was coming down from the mountain to set God's people free. Of course, you can't blame Peter, right? Peter's up there and hears the great heroes of the faith, Moses and Elijah. And the glory of God is shining all around. And let's stay up here for a while. But before he even got the words out, God interrupts him. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Because Jesus didn't come to shine God's glory from a mountaintop in Palestine. He came to come down from that mountain and to shine God's glory by setting people free. So what are we being set free from? What bondage is it that Jesus came to liberate us from? Those of you who endured, I mean, enjoyed confirmation class in a Lutheran church probably remember that Luther said Jesus 
came to set us free from our bondage to sin and death and the devil. And while 400 years later, we might pick different words, it isn't a bad place for us to start. For indeed, we are still, still in bondage to sin and death, and the devil is still out there tempting us, drawing us away from God. Indeed, we are still living in a world that is not yet the world that God created it to be. We are still living in a world where Christ is leading us, leading us to freedom. Jesus met on the side of that mountain with Moses and Elijah, and they discussed the exodus that he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. And indeed, he is still working to set God's people free, this time to set all of God's people free. I am especially reminded this morning of our need to be set free from violence and war. Isn't it amazing that all of these years later that our world still turns to destruction and killing to solve our problems and to get our own way? Indeed, as we think about and pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, but also in those places around the world where wars have been going and we haven't been noticing. It is certainly for this that Christ has come, has come to set us free. I suspect most of you are like me and feel rather helpless today. I mean, what are we supposed to do about a war going on across the world, 5,000 miles away, showing our support on Facebook just doesn't seem like quite enough. Although I ought to mention that that isn't nothing. Those folks in Ukraine and those folks in Russia absolutely are paying attention to whether or not the world cares, whether or not the world thinks what's going on and that part of the world matters. But it isn't enough, is it? We will indeed be called on soon to find ways to provide comfort and care to those whose lives and worlds are being turned upside down. And as we find out what those ways are, we will talk about those things. And we will indeed pray in our prayers today we will be using a prayer that congregations from denominations all over the world will be using. The words won't be exactly the ones that we might pick, but we will unite our hearts and our prayers because indeed it will be, it will be Christ, his work on the cross, his love and his grace working through us that will set God's people free and bring an end to war and violence and destruction. Jesus met with Moses and Elijah on the side of the mountain, and his glory shone so bright that the disciples could barely even look at him. As we, as we go out from this place and out into the world, we too, we too are being transformed and transfigured by that love and grace of God. We too are being called to become, to become free of those things that separate us from God and from God's love and God's grace. We are being called to be set free from violence, 
and war, to be set free from those things within us and those things outside of us that keep us from loving our neighbor and loving God, to be set free from from anger and hatred, from wealth and power, to be set free from racism and classism and all of those other things that, that are keeping our world and our brothers and sisters and, yes, ourselves from living the lives of freedom that God, God intends for us. Indeed, we are called We are called to be transformed and to be transfigured, to let that glory of God shine from our lives as we work, work to set set our world free, free from all those things that are keeping us from having the lives that God created us for. We are being called and empowered to be transformed, to be transfigured, to let the grace and glory of God shine from us. Amen. Let us continue our worship proclaiming our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. O divine, most mighty, most merciful, our sacred stories tell us that you help and save your people. You are the fortress. May there be no more war. You are the harvest. May there be no more hunger. You are the light. May no one die alone or in despair. O divine, most majestic, most motherly, Grant us your life, God of grace. 
Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace. The mountains and valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views, and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, you love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace. Heal those who are in distress. We remember especially today in our prayers, Bob Ballard, Charles Neiman, Marilyn Peterson, Ken Girardi, Tom Hawley, Eileen Ethington, Barbara and Bob Gillison, Pat Shank, Evelyn and Jim Clements, and their daughter Pam Babcock, Ezra Elcock. Unite our prayers to those throughout our synod who pray for Lutheran Church of the Atonement in Florissant, St. Mark's in Great Bend, Oaks Indian Mission in Oaks, and Christ Lutheran in Wichita. We pray for all of these and for those whom we name in our hearts. God of grace. Today, we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop. This week, we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of seasons, pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace, since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings, 
and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, sharing our life, lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For those of you communing with us at home, and those communing with the kits this morning. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. We are communing this morning by what we are now calling the regular way. We will come down the center aisle and receive the bread and wine, and we'll begin with the left side, and you'll get the bread and wine here and return around the outside, and then once we're finished with the left, we'll come to the right, and the choir is going to come over some way. (laughs) Let us begin.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday, 6 o'clock worship. If you'd like to get ashes earlier in the day, I'll be right out there. I don't know if Mosey's going to help me or not. (laughs) That'd be a bad idea, wouldn't it? (laughs) Um, Ash Wednesday. And then also, um, when we will be... Concluding the Genesis part of our um, Wednesday evening Bible study after the Ash Wednesday service on Wednesday. And then we will finish, then we will resume that Wednesday evening Bible study. Following Lent, we'll take a little break so that we've got, um, we can continue to use that Wednesday evening time spot. Um, There are still a number of empty spots in the uh, schedule for people to be a part of our Lenten worship series um, play or skits. And we've got some fantastic people already signed up, but there's room for more. And I'm not going to pick who plays Judas. But, but if you would, but that's one of the spots that's still open. <laughs> oh, what have I forgotten that we need to discuss this fine morning? Don't forget uh, Shirley Clark's birthday is March 8th. And we'd love to uh, have everybody send a birthday card for her. Also, Hurricane Deck is having their fundraising. And it's been out for a while, but they haven't had school. And I hadn't been here. So the information is in on the table, but I have to turn it in on Tuesday. So if you're interested, today is the day. Um, some of you maybe have read in the Old Testament that every so many years, I don't remember how many, they had a year of jubilee where debts were forgiven, etc. And I think you would all agree I've achieved a status in this church and in the world in general where I can declare a year, year of jubilee. Uh, today is my wife's birthday. And because it's a year of Jubilee, according to me, um, I'm going to forgive the last 10 years, and we won't add those to her birthday. (laughs) And I am the judge in the play, and you better be on your best behavior. (laughs) Oh, let's sing. Sure. Cheeseburger soup is the soup of the day. 
Going once, going twice. Do we have any first time visitors with us this morning? Let's sing. Hearing God's call and responding in love, we share Jesus with all.